Have you ever looked at something that seems so out of place? Meet Grisio, the only lolly? The little kid in a band of many colorful personalities, such as Angry Man, Mad Scientist. 2. Grisio strikes me as odd because unlike others, she doesn't fight. Don't get me wrong, we have people who doesn't fight, but even Cardofitis can at least do reconnaissance. But what does Grisio do? Nothing. Sit there painting all day. Why did she even become a mantis anyway? Or was it not voluntary? Today we'll be looking at the flame chasers who for all intents and purposes is irrelevant except for one instance. You know why Grisio ER files are all paintings instead of the usual wall of text like any other detailing her deeds? Because that's all she really f***ing does. Her image is a pure adolescent. Maybe they don't tell the age. A callback to a simpler time when you're just a curious and impressionable kid before the real world hits you at the age of 13. How Grisio actually became a mantis is quite an interesting one, as she was the daughter of Mobius's top assistant who left Klein in her place after her marriage. Grisio's status as the daughter of Mobius's closest assistant was her ticket to becoming a mantis, as when she was injured in a disaster that took away her parents, it was her mother's connection that allowed her to still live after the fact, after Mobius made her into a mantis. Remember that one time a moth researcher goes, you know, saving people is good and all, but it's too expensive. This would suggest that Grisio is an emotional significance to Mobius to some degree. Regardless, the surgery amplified certain aspects of Grisio. I'm sure you've heard about how kids use imitation to develop as part of their development in their childhood. But Grisio takes this to 11, which has given us some humorous response. The funny thing is that when this happens, people refer to her as being contaminated, like some kind of awe absorbing sponge or a white piece of canvas. The latter just so lines up with how she decontaminates herself by painting the influence away. But what makes it interesting is that the surgery also made her painting gives people the feels, quite terrifyingly, to say the least. What would happen if she paints after hanging around Kelpass for a while? Usually she would paint landscapes, but sometimes she paints some friends for herself to play with, by which I mean vicious beasts from a PH show. The two possibility for why they look like the sky people is that A. The devs didn't want to make a new set of enemies just for a minor character, so they just took the existing models and recolored it. Or B. It was a deliberate choice to tell us that Grisio became an alien overlord who directly kickstarted Sky People imperialism. More on this in a bit. In any case, there are many reasons for why someone would not want her needing to paint. An easy solution would be to just throw her into solitary confinement, but that's inhumane, she's just a kid. Better save it for when it's an actual existential threat, am I right? Anyway, there were two people who took up this caretaker job. It was Cosma and Aponia. You could say Mobius was another one, but she's way too busy at her job anyway, so you would mostly see these two. Even though two people worked on safeguarding Grisio, it was by no means a cooperative effort. It definitely feels more like a battle for a child's custody, with Cosma being on his best game most of the time. Because Grisio didn't do anything but paint, her files are instead a mix of facts, metaphors, or important themes relevant to the person she chose to paint for. I've said about how there were many reasons to not want her to paint, as in many cases it can be harmful to those who laid their eyes on it. But sometimes the reaction can be positive, like that one time she painted me a picture of her girlfriend. Grisio Art Review Podophilus' lonely existence could be referring to Sundown Alley going to shit. I actually have no idea what this is supposed to reference. If anyone has an idea, please tell me. Cosmo used to dream of space travel, but he didn't get to pursue it as evident by the broken space shuttle. The description says that the boy looks up with hope which it doesn't really show, but it can be taken as him moving on to something else like, I don't know, a showdown with the final Hersha? A weeping priest holding a hatched egg, often a sign of transformation. It would suggest that this was referring to how Sakura couldn't save the stuff she holds dear, like how she failed to save her sister when she turned into a Hersher. A symbol of perseverance, as in how Eden was an inspiration to her era, a shiny beacon in the midst of death and destruction. Let depiction of when Kelpass crashed down from the sky. More in this video.
I'm almost convinced this is referring to how Ruby's invention gonna come back and bite her in the ass, which as the description says, was a bad omen. This is just depression, like how alienated Aponia was to wither away alone in some unseen corner. A white bird is often seen as a symbol of freedom and innocence, something that was restricted by the cage in this piece. A perfect metaphor for Grisio's sheltered life, kept away from truly experiencing the world. Not that it would be pleasant. You can see two shadows over the cage, which should be referring to her two caretakers, Cosma and Aponia. I'm sure there's some reference to Alicia being a Hersher, maybe a result of her interference. I would expect this to make sense after the Alicia Realm arc ends. So, on to the most contentious part of her story. Where did she go? In the end, her interaction with Willie would suggest that she boarded the arc a ship to travel and find habitable planets for humans to continue to exist, especially when defeat became certain at the time. It's true that Cosma was shown to be opposed to this somewhat, but from a utilitarian perspective, it's better to have Grisio take the arc because she doesn't fight. Sending her to the moon would be just sending fodder, and Cosma wasn't too keen in running away in the first place. So you could see Grisio taking the arc in his place to, you know, pay him back. I remember seeing this one line during the moon battle where Kevin said something about someone should have died standing up, which in this case is appropriate for Cosma because he and Kevin had a history together which couldn't be said for the rest who took part. For the reasons above, it's likely that Grisio took the arc and left, which means she could still be alive in the current era 50,000 years later. The most we have got about this was when the arc lost transmission, which leaves a lot of room for theorizing. Many already made observations about how the monster's Grisio paints were supposedly inspired by the influence from Cosma. If we assume that it wasn't just the devs being lazy, it would mean Grisio could have settled somewhere, drawn a lot of these things, maybe lost control of them, perhaps her powers mutated and these things broke away to become the sky people, and it's pretty convenient that the monsters from a PH show were described as a product of a child's imagination. I could think of a few reasons to disprove this argument, but that in itself is a whole matter deserving of its own video. A more dark alternative is that, mm, have you ever seen the shelter animation by Porter Robinson? It has quite a similar predicament to Grisio's, lonely, hopeless, in space. Eh. Grisio have always lived a perfectly sheltered life, like a bird in a cage, kept away from all the wonders of the world, like death. But when the day eventually comes where she would break free, she would come face to face with the massive challenge ahead of her, metaphorical of her battlesuit name, a star in the vast openness that is the sky. So, what are your own thoughts on Grisio's story after she may or may not have took the arc? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching today's video. Please like and subscribe and have a great day. Hellscape with some kind of sacrificial altar, but that doesn't matter because she still found ways to make Kelpas stronger by utilizing sci-fi magic to turn him into a mantis. It wasn't quite a